G'day there, Rick here. In this video, what we're going to be looking at is the structure in Obsidian or any personal knowledge management system for that matter of home notes and maps of content or MOCs and how they relate to indexes, tables of contents or views. So stick around, hope you enjoy it and gain something from it. Okay, well, as I said in this video, we'll be looking at an introduction to maps of content, MOCs, indexes, tables of contents, and views, as they are also known. But I'll be focusing on the Obsidian Personal Knowledge Management System. That's the one that I use, and that's the one that I know. So if it has application to the ones that you use, well, great. I hope you uh, get some benefit out of it, because the principles are very much uh, similar. So, where did the term originate? I did some searching high and low for this, and the earliest example that I can find of it being used was in an article by Nick Milo on the Medium platform in August 2020. So I can only assume that Nick is the one that invented the term, uh, and it is quite a descriptive and useful term for what the documents do, maps of content. It does actually provide a map. So it's a great article outlining the relationships between notes, and I would certainly suggest that you go and read it. I will provide a link to it in the show notes uh, to this video. So it defines maps of content as evergreen notes, just it's at the next level of emergence. So up from your basic note, your atomic note or, or evergreen note, depending on what you might call it, it's the next level up, but it can also occupy places several levels up as well as we will see as we progress through the presentation. So the map of content organises notes by proximity as well, what's close around that particular topic and what their relationship is to each other. So the map of content is giving you an overview, if you like, of the topic that you're looking at. So if we consider a map of content from an overview perspective, it's generally a manually created note that contains an overview of a subject, concept, topic, whatever it is that you might be interested in, that collects everything into the one point. So it can be broken down into several components or areas and address a number of notes, but it's a big picture sort of note, a macro note, if you like, that looks over a, uh, a larger area. So it can link out also to a number of other maps of content, and those maps of content might be sideways, they might be up in your knowledge management system, they may be down through your knowledge management system. The linking is what's important. So it's an overview note, as I said, it's a, a, a macro note, and it provides structure for a number of other notes. So it's giving you an overview of the structure of where all these other notes that are listed in your map of content are coming from. So in this slide, you can see the structure. It's pretty simplistic, but it's intended to demonstrate that MOCs are hierarchical. So from a home note, you'll drill down to a subject area that might have a map of content, then down to an article name perhaps, which has got all of your information that you're going to use to write an article, which will link out to the article as well. So from an organisation point of view, it can create the hierarchies used, uh, it can have lists, it can have call outs, they can all be folded uh, so that there's maximum visual impact when you just first look at the note, you get a really big picture of what the map of content is about. So let's have a look at this uh, image here in a little bit more detail and go through it. So let's have a look at this structure in a little bit more detail. Here you've got your home note, then you've got a subject area, let's say we'll call it gardening for the sake of the exercise, and then you've got an article that you're going to write. You've got a map of content for the article. So let's say that you're going to write an article about roses. So you've been and explored the web and you've found a whole lot of different information about roses and you've made notes about what you found. Here we've got four notes, but it could be 400. No, it's up to you. And then in addition, you've also got 
you know, citations or structured notes, maybe academic notes, if you're familiar with those types of things, which generally have a separate format. And they're all linking back to your map of content for your article name as well. And then out here, you've got your actual article, which is also linked back into your map of content. But this here becomes your main document if you want a big overview of this article that you're writing on roses. So I hope that gives you a, a good idea of the setup of the structure. So if we look at the benefits of having maps of content, visualization is one of the big ones. Using the graph in Obsidian, you can pull up the graph view with the map of content at the center and look at all the connections to the different notes in your vault. So that provides a big benefit. Then, of course, after visualization is organization. You can create the hierarchies. You can use lists. You can use callouts that all can be folded for the maximum visual impact. So here's a map of content for a book. And you can use one for a book, a book in three sentences. And you can see here I've got some little greater than arrows. And they're all lists, so they can pop out. But you get the impression from the note as it is at the moment. It's high visual impact, and you can see what it's all about straight away without having it all open. So then the last one in terms of the benefits can be the flexibility. Using custom Mac using custom maps of content using data view groups can provide a view and organize no notes in any way that you might desire now that's better called a view or an index uh, to distinguish the result because it really is a list so now we've been through all that let's have a look at a somewhat of a a, a bit of a mess but it's it hopefully is reasonably clear uh, this is a canvas from obsidian to demonstrate the hierarchical PKM structure. So here you've got the home note, uh, and I've got Nick Milo's app or link to his article out here in the side, which you can, uh, whoop, we can't, we could, if we click on it there, we can scroll through it and have a look at read of the article in the canvas view. We'll just center that again. Uh, the home note, now here we've got some maps of content for books, there's another one for apps, there's another one for Obsidian. And underneath the Obsidian one, we've got themes, we've got plugins, we've got articles, we've got videos. Under the plugins, we've got the data view plugin. Uh, we've also got the templater plugin. We've also got um, the uh, commander plugin. Because now these ones are, are maps because under the templater one, we've got the templates for the daily note, the article template, and also for the note template. Commander is a plugin in its own right, and that's under that map of content. For the data view map of content, we're going into the sample queries. We've got the data view query builder. We've got a to-do list, top level indexes, and articles to write. These are all data view queries that could be done, and you've got notes on them. Under the themes, you could put your different types of themes that you might use. And so if if just have a look at this and consider it and just get an idea of how these maps of content flow within the personal knowledge management system back and forth and up and down and side to side and connect with each other to connect to create the marvelous constellation that is a personal knowledge management system so from maps of content if we move on now to index pages or views or tables of content they're very similar uh, the purpose of those is more to provide an overview of topics and content in a particular workspace. So it will give you the chance to locate several interesting notes at once, usually within a list or in a table. Now, I often do mine in uh, callouts and tables, uh, and I'll list the notes, as you can see here on the left-hand side in my concepts index, and I also put the, the date modified. Now, I've created this for the purpose of the presentation, which is why they're all the same date. But under normal circumstances, you can index this by date, uh, the latest date, or you can index it in ascending file name or descending file name, whatever you might like to do. So you can create an index page or a view and add links to existing notes so that whenever you go there, they're automatically added. And you can organize it by way of folders, 
by tags or headings when you're arranging the content as well, which is also very helpful and lots of flexibility. So here on the screen in this slide, I'm showing you a tag view where the tags have all been pulled into a, uh, an index. Now I, I organize my vault by using the Johnny Decimal system. Um, don't get bogged down in dogma about organization of your structure. It's what works for you. That's why it's called a personal knowledge management system. But the purpose here is that this tag view is the learning tag. And it's providing an overview of notes relating to that particular tag, the learning tag. So you can organize it whichever way you, you wish and what you need to suit your purposes. So you can create an index page or view all the notes where a tag exists in existing or in any placeholder notes as well. And you can organize it by folders, categories or alias to arrange the content as you need to do it. So this one's organized by... Uh, folder, tens, the thirties, the seventies, and the different notes that are in there that are tagged with that particular learning thing. So that's a useful way of using tags to create index pages or views. And so in summary, a map of content or an MOC as we called it, it's a higher level note. It's the next level up from your absolute base level note. And an index or a view is a list or a table of related notes. It can be high, so high, the MOC can be high, that is only one note below the home note, or it can be several level deeps as we saw before on the Obsidian uh, example. It can be very, very valuable for the organization of ideas and concepts around your notes. It can give you that macro view that could be so helpful to just letting you identify something from a balcony perspective as opposed to getting stuck down into the weeds. And it can also provide that glance view if organised properly where you condense everything rather than have the whole note expanded and spread out. So I hope this has been useful to you and I look forward to any of your comments that you might have or any questions about MOCs and um, I'll see you next time. Cheers.